Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to explain the timing diagram of call instruction. So for that, taking for that, I am taking a part of the main program, uh, which starts from location one f f a h to two zero zero eight h. So in between this main program at location two zero zero three h, I am calling the or I am uh, I have written the call instruction that is c uh, call two zero five zero h. So when this instruction call instruction is executed the program counter the value at the program counter is first pushed into the stack and then the subroutine is executed and here the subroutine is located at location 2050h now for this particular instruction call, we need five machine cycles. So those machine cycles are upcode fetch, memory read, memory read, and uh, later two memory write machine cycles. So why five machine cycles are required? So let us see that. So here the call instruction has been written at location two zero zero three h. So let's see how this instruction is stored because this is a three byte instruction. So at location 2003H, the upcode, the upcode for the call instruction that is CD will be stored. Then at the next memory location that is 2004H, the lower order byte of this address will be stored. That means, um, I'm sorry, so this is 2050H. So five, the lower order byte will be 50 which will be stored in the next address. And then at the next address location that is 2005H, the higher order byte of the address will be stored. That means 20H will be stored here. So for this three, you know, to for reading this three data, we need first three machine cycles. So for reading the upcode, we need upcode fetch machine cycle. And for reading this two data, we need two memory read machine cycles. Now, as I have discussed, uh, before uh, executing the subroutine, the content of the program counter should be pushed into the stack or should be written into the stack. So here after this call instruction, now my program counter contains the location 2006H. So this value should be pushed into the stack. So first um, 20 should be written here and 06 should be written at the next location in the stack. Okay, so for this two thing we need two memory write machine cycles. So that is why we need two extra memory write cycles. So now let's discuss how many T states T states are required by each of this machine cycles. So here of course fetch machine cycle requires six T states. Memory read and memory write machine cycles require three T states each. So the call instruction requires a total of 18 T states. Now, a question arises why 6 T states are required by the upcode fetch machine cycle in call instruction because in general, the upcode fetch machine cycle requires 4 T states. So, let me explain that. So, for that I need the uh, timing diagram. So, here I have drawn, drawn the timing diagram for call instruction mm, and I have the you know t states so what happens in the first four uh, t states of the upcode fetch machine cycle the incrementer decrementer i mean it is a unit in the 8085 architecture so that incrementer decrementer is busy in incrementing the program counter so here the program counter is incremented so before in the upcode fetch machine cycle uh, what is the um, content of the program counter see uh, the call instruction I mean the opcode for the call instruction is stored at memory location 2003H. So for this opcode fetch machine cycle we will be having 2003 mm, in the address bus and data bus and the incrementer and decrementer will increment the program counter. So the value of the program counter will be 2004H now which will be used in the next machine cycle. So we can say that the value or the content of the program counter in a particular machine cycle is obtained from the previous machine cycle. Okay. So here in this machine cycle 
from this machine cycle 2004 is obtained and again in the second machine cycle that is the memory read machine cycle the incrementer decrementer is busy in incrementing the program counter. So, now the value of the program counter will be 2005H which will be used in the third machine cycle that is the memory read machine cycle. Again in this machine cycle the incrementer decrementer unit is will increment the program counter. So, now the program counter will be having the value 2006H. But in the memory write machine cycle we will write the content of the program counter in the stack. So, what is the content of program counter now? So, it is 2006H and my stack is pointing to location 4000H. So, before the 20 is pushed into or written into the stack, the stack pointer needs to be decremented to the value 3FFFH. So, see here all the previous machine cycle are in all the previous machine cycle the incremented decrementer is busy in incrementing the program counter. So, where to decrement the stack pointer? So, and uh, in particular we cannot extend the memory read machine cycles, but we can extend the upcode fetch machine cycle. So, here we have extended the upcode fetch machine cycle by 2 t states and in this 2 t state uh, the stack pointer is decremented by the incrementer decrementer unit of 8085. So, here the stack pointer is decremented to 3 f f f h and this value will be used in the fourth machine cycle that is the memory write machine cycle. And at this location uh, the value of the program I mean the higher order byte of the program counter is stored and in the then the stack pointer is decremented here in the fourth machine cycle and the value of the stack pointer will be 3 f f d here and this location will be used by the last machine cycle and in that machine cycle the next byte that is 0 6 is written in the stack. So, that is how I mean that is the concept behind 6 t state in this opcode fetch machine cycle. Now, let us draw the timing diagram. So, while drawing the timing, timing diagram we should keep in your keep in our mind that uh, we should represent the address line the multiplex address data bus ALE, IO slash M bar, S0, S1, RD bar and WR bar. The you know the order of this four pins can be altered, but the order of the first three pins should not be altered. So, you should keep this um, you know. Uh, point in the mind while drawing the timing diagram. So, first uh, uh, what is the uh, what will be the condition of IO slash M bar? Here we know that uh, the operation is memory operation not IO operation. So, for all the uh, for all the uh, you know all the machine cycles the condition of IO slash M bar will be 0. So, at first I am drawing this line. So, IO slash M bar is 0 throughout. Now, what will be the condition of S0, S1? So, for upcode fetch machine cycle, S1 should be equals to 1 and S0 also is equals to 1. Similarly, what is the uh, condition of S0, S1 for memory read machine cycle? So, that thing has to be written here. Here the value of S1 is equals to 1 and the value of S0 is equals to 0. And for memory write machine cycles, the value of S1 is equals to 0 and the value of S0 is equals to 1. Then we will come to ALE. We know that ALE is high in the first T state of every machine cycle. So, here I will draw it to be high and again for the next machine cycle it is high. So, similarly I draw the ALE signal for the entire timing diagram. 
now i will draw the content of i mean i will write down the content of address and uh, data bus so here i need to write down the instruction first so at 2003h the opcode cd is stored and at location 2004h and the higher order byte that is 50h is stored and location 2005h the low, higher order byte that is 20h is stored okay so this things has to be read and now in the stack at location 3f FFH, uh, the program counter value has to be stored. That means 20 has to be stored here and location 3F FDH, the value 06 has to be stored or it has to be written. So, this operation will be performed in this timing diagram. So, first I will draw the address bus. So, the address bus will contain the address for 3T state. So, here the address bus will contain the higher order address. So, 20H will be here. So, see for this particular you know um, value. So, at location 2003H CD will be read in the upcode fetch machine cycle. And the lower order byte that is 0 lower order byte of the address will be carried in the address data bus. So, here it will carry 03H. Now, after certain time when RD bar will when RD bar will glow, go low at the time the data at that location will be read. So, here the RD bar will go low here suppose so, in this time period, the opcode will be read from the memory location. So, here CD will be stored in the data bus. Okay. Now, for rest of the T state, the condition of the address bus will be unspecified and the condition of the multiplex address data bus will be high impedance state. So, that is why we are representing it in a dotted line. Okay. Now, for this upcode fetch machine cycle, the right bar will be 1 throughout. Okay. So, now we have completed the upcode fetch machine cycle. Next, we need to draw the second machine cycle that is the memory read. So, for first memory read, we need to put this location 2004H in the address and the address data bus. So, here the address bus will contain the higher order address that is 20H and in the first T state it will contain the lower order address that means 04H and then when RD bar, RD bar will go low at that time the data at that location will be read. So, when RD bar is low, my address data bus will contain the data. So, it will contain 50H and then in similarly in the uh, next machine cycle, uh, 20H will be read from location 2005H. So, I am not explaining it again, just I am drawing the diagram. So, 20H will be there and here I will be having 05H. And then when RD bar will be low, the data will be there in the data bus. So, here it will be 20H. So, one thing let me tell you. So, in the second machine cycle, this 50 data will be stored in the Z register and in the second memory read machine cycle this data will be stored in the W register. So, these two are internal regist register and the operation is also internal and it is taken care by the microprocessor and it is not represented in the timing diagram. Now, I will draw the 
timing diagram of next two memory write uh, machine cycles. So it is little bit tricky. So see here first the address is 3FFFH. So here the higher order address will be carried will be here. So it is it is 3FH and the lower order byte will be here that is FF and once the location is there in this two address data buses. So what will happen this will at this location the content of the pro, the higher order byte of the program counter will be written. So for that the WR bar should go. So the WR bar should go low. So for the time when it is low the data will be fetched and it will be written in the location specified and here the RD bar signal will remain 1 ok. So same thing will happen here again here the next stack pointer um, I mean uh, the next location in the stack will be loaded in the address bus and the address data bus. So 3FH will be here and for the first T state it will be FDH and at that location the lower order byte of the program counter will be stored when WR bar will go low. So here 06H will be there. And uh, zero, now at the end of this machine cycle the 06H will be written into the stack location ok. Now see the um, address uh, I mean the address which is there in the program counter has been written into the stack. But for the next machine cycle this address which is there in the WZ register that means the address of our subroutine should be placed in the program counter. So when it should be placed? So this address will be copied to the program counter in the first machine cycle of the next instruction. And it is not represented in the, it is not represented in the stack, uh, I am sorry, it is not represented in the timing diagram and it is taken care by the microprocessor and it is an internal operation. So I hope you have understood the timing diagram of call instruction. Thank you.